<laughs> Melania Faye's partnership was born out of the Canadian Opera Company's outreach and education department six years ago. As an innovative part of a COC strategy to invite people into the world of opera, Milan and Faye are commissioned annually to create and perform at the RBC Noontime Concert Series at the Four Seasons Centre. The success of these concerts has led to such high-profile appearances as headlining the Harborfront Strings and Voice Festival in 2014 and opening the Hamilton Philharmonic's What's Next Festival this season. Milan and Faye are excited to be to be have upcoming performances across Canada, including shows at the Sudbury Theatre Centre, Richmond Hill Centre for the Performing Arts, and the Weldon Port Colborne Concert Association, and wrapping up the season in Banff, Alberta. Their hilarious videos can be seen on their YouTube channel, Milan and Faye Presents. It is my pleasure to introduce Milan and Faye Present, The Opera. Tina. Ah, we're making noise. Okay, we'll start. Okay, we won't start. <laughs> what was that, Mike? This? Okay, are we good? Nope. Alright. Singing is terrifying. Opera, the Olympics of singing. Singing in public, most people's greatest fear, short of death itself, or a zombie apocalypse. That was me. When I was young, I was terrified to sing in public. I didn't truly find my voice until I moved to the big city, into a tiny apartment, and discovered some very noisy neighbors. Just moved in to 14G, so cozy, calm, and peaceful. Heaven for a mouse like me. With quiet by the leaseful, pets are banned, parties too, and no solicitation. A window seat with garden view, the perfect nook to read a book. I'm lost in my Jane Austen when I Thank you. 
this is my pal, Tina Fitt. Yes, there's another very funny Tina Fitt, but this one is also funny, and she plays the piano. Yeah. Yeah. We're so excited to be here in front of a whole bunch of singers to share with you my journey from a shy shower diva to an opera singer and our discovery of the sublime and sublimely ridiculous world of opera. Well, and some weird things you might not know. Really? Yeah. Oh yes, did you know that pianists are terrified to leave their piano? We are not. Yes, you are. Okay, Tina, tell us something, you who are not afraid to leave your piano. Okay, um, well, the piano, the hammers of the piano hit the strings at the speed of an arrow hitting a target. Okay, so, and Rachmaninoff had a hand span of 13 notes. Okay! It's incredible. Yeah, okay, let's talk about the show. Yeah, okay. All right, singers are such weirdos. Yeah, that's our show. Weird, wonderful. Okay, now, from that time in that tiny apartment, I discovered I really like making sound. So, I plucked up my courage and signed up for singing lessons. I found some fantastic teachers, some of whom are still important to me to this day. And they taught me more about life and myself than about singing. Their lessons will stick with me for life. Me too. Yeah, and I also had horrific teachers who said terrible things to me, which also stick with me for life. Very, very true. And I felt like they were all saying something different, like, watching you see is as boring as liver on a plate. Have got one? That was so good. It must have been a mistake. These are all true. Singing. Eat lack. Driven the heavy. You have the first lean. You have the slow lean. You are going this way. <laughs> Ugh. Your fingers, they're just too small. Must be related to small orange men. Bon, d'accord, je pense que tu dois commencer à le dire, quoi, commencer à le dire. Quel est le mot? Ah, I know. I think you should quit. <laughs> All true. So don't listen to the negatives, my friends. Despite that, I did start taking lessons. And I discovered that they were a very serious, intense, sophisticated affair. Observe early lessons. Okay, Kira, let's get started. Okay. Okay, excellent. Begin. Good. Okay, and next. Excellent. Okay, now let's loosen your jaw. Yeah. Okay, and next. Awesome. However, we will not be doing that. Uh, we will be working on your ABCs again. to work on your diction. Yes, again. <laughs>
Yeah. So can I try one? You can try one, but only to the tune of Twinkle Twinkle.
realized that this was the world for me. And I had to give up other childhood dreams like veterinarian or astronaut or veterinary astronaut. Eggs in space! You're all too young, but much of my career is inspired by the Muppets. When I started going to the opera, I saw my first, actually, a movie version of an opera, which was with my dad, and it was by Bizet. I thought the music was tremendously catchy, and I was absolutely enthralled by its leading lady, the rebellious, independent, bewitching Carmen. When I didn't think my parents were listening, I would put on her album, tells you how old I am, and I would sing along to her arias. I had two records growing up. I had Carmen and the Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> so I would alternate days between being a rebellious gypsy woman and a sweet transvestite. <laughs> you know, both were actually very powerful, confident folks, and I thought they were incredible idols for a young girl growing up. Powerful, confident, independent, led unconventional lives, and seemed happier for it. So, it was with this in mind that I took the role of Carmen to my teacher. She informed me that I would never play the role of Carmen. Why? Fuck. It's German for voice type. Did you know that in movies you are cast according to how you look? In opera, you are cast according to the voice type you were born with. So opera should really have birth announcements. I think they would go like this. Congratulations, you've had a mental soprano. <laughs> Her roles will include wise women, nurses, witches, villains, seductresses, and prepubescent boys. <laughs> will likely never be paid as much as the tenor, but mental sopranos are renowned for being the most well-liked and down-to-earth characters of the cast. Well, down-to-earth for opera singers. You're saying? Uh, that you're high maintenance, traitor, like a race car, or a thoroughbred. True. I like you, you get me. <laughs> All right, I think that now, uh, maybe you should have a turn talking and, and I'll take a break instead of the piano. Oh. Go on, leave the nest. You're really? fine, it's okay, they're so nice. I think they're nice, but they're yeah, no. It's okay, yes, you can leave for two seconds. Maybe explain voice types, yes? Tell them the truth about singers. No. Hello. Let me tell you the truth about singers. No. There are the mezzos. They play sultry roles in powerful women, like, like Carmen. They're often in love with the tenor. The tenor is the hero. But the tenor is usually in love with the soprano. Can't account for taste. Now these unions don't last very long, because usually the Sopranos are killed off before the end of the opera. Uh, and then there's the most dramatic, extreme voice type. These are the ones that sing high and fast and loud all the time. These are the color churros. Here's voice type. I put up with her. Now, sometimes sopranos and mezzos do get along, and they make beautiful music, which is sometimes featured in airline ads. And no opera is complete without the baritone. He sings many notes. He's your comedian, your everyman. He's in every opera. Now, opera does have a bit of a dark problem in its history. In the Baroque era, Composers wrote female roles for men to act and to sing. Now these men, they kept their youthful soprano voices through... Uh... <laughs> but luckily these days, we have capture tenors, and they can sing all of those notes without losing anything. <laughs> But the voice who plays fathers and priests and makes everyone listen is the bass. <laughs> Bravo, you did well. Great. Well, thank you. So my pet peeve 
is this kind of so what is this doing here? Well, on your we mind. are in the theater, therefore I have the compulsive need to slowly unwrap the noisiest candy I could find. No, no. You know what? This brings to mind. I haven't asked them yet whether they've been to an opera. Okay, so let's talk about this for a minute. Okay. Hands up, those of you who have seen an opera. Okay, hands up, those of you who would like to become a singer. Oh, wow, wonderful. Do it. <laughs> All right, now, uh, uh, there's a lot of people who actually have not been to the opera yet. So I liked to sing and whistle along when I started going to operas, um, which I don't recommend. So I think now might be a really good time to do an overture together. Now, when an opera begins, usually, quite often, there's an overture to invite you into the world you are about to see. The orchestra plays music, and then you have an idea of what's coming. Yes, it's also for latecomers to get to their seats, but aside from that. So before we get to the part about the opera, I would like to do an audience overture of inappropriate audience noises. And then we'll get to the fun. All right. They're already pre- I know, I was gonna say. They're pre-sorted for me. This yeah. is unbelievable. So I'm going to be your conductor. You're conveniently into three sections. <laughs> And I'm going to give you a bit of an inkling of what it's like when we don't have a good audience. And as singers, you know how important that is, yes? We've all been there. And Tina and I are touring all over the place right now. And often, we encounter audiences like this. Not as wonderful as you. That's a truly wonderful. My friends over here, we're going to be in 3-4. You're going to be the percussion. You are going to be those folks who, upon discovering they have bronchitis, <laughs> buy tickets to the opera, and come equipped with a bag full of cellophane wrapped candies which you open in seeming perpetuity during the quiet bits. And your sound's gonna go like this. Go. So so the two three is silent, yes? And they had rhythm. I love it. We just played a house of a thousand seniors last week. <laughs> Let me tell you, it wasn't as organized and rhythmic as that. It was adorable, but it wasn't as good as that. All right, now, my friends in the center, you are those folks who forgot to turn off your cell phones, and your light motif or ringtone sounds like this. All right, so I was told that you were all singers. So I will assume that that's your pianissimo. Yes, let's try that again. And Mezzo piano, good. All right, we're getting there. How about mezzo forte? Let me try. And bravi. I will always cue you. You are gonna just go on until I do this, which in conductor world means stop or you're fired. Yes. <laughs> and my friends over here, you are the true opera fans. Righteous vehemence by going shh. <laughs> yes. Now, because you're clever, I'm going to give you two cues. You have the regular shh, and then I'm going to go like this, and you guessed it. I want three staccati shushes. But hold on. Your cue is always the cell phones. So let's see if they're still awake. Are you awake? Here we go. And. Shh. Okay. <laughs> it started out so well with you guys. You were so wonderfully loud and enthusiastic, and now you're all Canadian on me. <laughs> it's like, like, do you want to apologize for shushing as well? <laughs> Let's try that again. Let's imagine they're all Trump, yes? your moment before. Let's put it together. Here we go. Oh, you fell asleep. Excuse me one moment. I find it helps if you use the hands, you know? Let's see some gestures. Two, three. You're sleeping too. What's happening? Are you ready? Thank <laughs> you. 
Because let's face it, opera plots are ridiculous. <laughs> Here are some actual opera plots. Man falls in love with the wrong woman. She turns out to be a god. His sister, a tree, a chair. There's actually an opera invented in 2005 called The Man Who Fell in Love with a Chair. I'm not making it up. All wedding night, a young bride is going for a tour of her husband's home, opens the final door, and discovers the souls of his last three wives. Or this French opera by Poulenc. A woman's breasts turn into balloons, float off, and are caught. <laughs> thus inspiring her husband to give birth himself to 40,049 babies all in one day. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Right. And if a character is hiding on stage so no one can find them, they're still singing loudly enough for 3,000 people to hear. And if they're dying of suffocation, tuberculosis, or stabbing, they can still somehow sing for 40 minutes over an orchestra without a microphone. It is easy to make fun of. But operas really like that melodramatic friend we all know and love. You know, the one who feels everything deep and has to share it all the time. The one we watch with fascination and horror at what they're going to do next. The one whose life struggles are epic. But around them, you no longer feel alone. lends itself well to singing, which we do all the time. And we have solos, we have duets. Sometimes huge herds of singers burst into song, and if it happens in your grocery store, it's a flash mob, but if it happens in opera, it's a chorus. We also have this weird thing that we don't really do in musical theater, and that is, we do this thing called recitative. Can you all say that? Recitative. Yeah. So we speak sing to advance the action or to have a monologue. And for this, I'm going to need a volunteer. Someone who's only slightly terrified to come up on stage with me. And perhaps maybe we'll come up and have a conversation. I a microphone to you, maybe not.
Yes. So um, I know sometimes you don't like my ideas, but Where I thought is this going? I just thought well, it does get lonely up here, and I really enjoy singing with Katie. And I thought it would be nice if maybe you and I could play some duets sometimes. Oh no, this is my piano. But I can just. Oh yeah, no. Just you just have to move over a little bit. Yeah, just no, move no, over no, 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 no. Because you know it's so nice and cozy together. and then nothing. So my teacher knew I was a coloratura and uh, gave me this song, which I'm going to do a little bit of today, which is the Tales of Hoffman. Oh. It is the doll song from the Tales of, what? We don't need to do that song. What, oh, okay. No? No. Oh. Then I have to leave the piano. Okay. You did it before and nobody burst into flame and no one died, as far as I know. Okay, so we're gonna do the doll and then you can play your Chopin. Okay. Yeah? Can I bribe you with Chopin? Okay. But you have to wind me up. Jeez, honestly. Ah, you're playing my hair, you're playing my hair, you're playing my hair. Okay. That's intentional. Oh, I don't think it. Okay. <laughs>
important things, like the orchestra. Did you know that orchestras for the opera can have up to 200 players? For big shows like Wagner, uh, back in the day they didn't have amplification like this stuff, so basically if you wanted louder sounds, you needed more people. It's like horses and horsepower, right? Now the thought of having 200 horses portable pulling a car is now in my brain. Um, yeah, so how many of you play an orchestral instrument? Wow, that's awesome. So what are some of the, the instruments that are in an opera orchestra? The cello. Cello. There's definitely cellos. I've never heard of a cello. It could be a different, different thing altogether. Yes, anybody else? Violins. Violin. Huh? Violins, definitely violins. Anything other than string instruments? Bassoon. We've definitely got some bassoons. Yeah. Yeah. So when we get into Wagner, what do we have? What do we think of when we hear Wagner? Do we know? What do we think of? We have like a million tubas in Wagner. You ever seen? You look up a picture, Google it, look up at a Wagner orchestra, and you have like an army of, of tubas. It's amazing. And who plays the piano here? Truly the best instrument, right? Yeah, yeah. Did you know? I know I'm not a singer, but come on. Um, did you know that the piano, you can basically play, for all the like opera uh, reductions and stuff like that, you're playing the entire orchestral part on the piano. So most of the stuff, except for my one, Chopin that I got Scott to play, um, all of that was music that was written for the orchestra originally, and then reduced for the piano. Yeah, so that for when you're doing things like opera rehearsals, you don't have to hire an entire orchestra because that would be highly uneconomic. Uh, you can just hire a pianist, and we do all the work with like 200 people. Not to brag. Uh, but I think, I think we're ready. We're going to actually do a little opera scene with you guys, but you're going to be all of our chorus, so let's learn the chorus first. You might have heard this before. confidence in you folks. You seem like wonderful singers. Let's try it. Ready? La, 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 la. in one of their mini operas, and it's part of our bigger show where I do a bad audition. I show up in costume, riddled with jewels. But anyway, I thought I would wear this because we would like to improvise an opera scene with you all right now. Yes? How many years do you think it takes to prepare a role for an opera? Yes, darling. You think three years? Yeah, you know what? Edita Grubarova, when she learns every night, it took her two years. And yes, it's not the kind of show, could you make sure I'm not going to fall off? Yes, yes. okay. <laughs> it's the bottom. Um, and also, when you show up to rehearsal in an opera, you have to already know everything. And we spend about three weeks rehearsing. I'm just telling you this because I'm going to ask three people to come up on stage and improvise an opera in 30 seconds. And then you all are going to sing the chorus, which sounded okay, but it was a bit timid. low energy. So we're going to bring up the energy, yes? All right. So for this, I will need a gentleman to come up. Would you come up? And, uh, yes, give a round of applause. And do I have any women who would like to come up here? I need, I need another man. Yes, go to Tina. She'll tell you what to do. He's just standing there being handsome. But, you know, which is good.
thank you. Now, my friends, when we do the chorus, I want you to get your favorite drink in hand, and when you do the high notes, I want you to toast the person beside you. Yeah? And we're going to do the chorus twice. So let's try it. La 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 Glass goes up. La 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 Second time, glass goes up to the next person beside you. And then we do it twice through, yes? All right. Are we ready? Question. Where should we set our opera? Italy. Italy. Okay. Yes. Where should we set it, Tina? Italy. Okay, so we need a mic on Tina right now. Hello? Hello. Thank you. Know. You know what you're doing? Good. All right. Do you know what you're doing? They're well coached. Okay. All right. So they want Italy. Italy. And what, where, what kind of place in Italy? I mean, I'm a big fan of coffee. Italian mm -hmm. coffee is pretty amazing. We both, let, our lifeblood is espresso, you may have noticed, because I talk faster than a hummingbird on crack cocaine. <laughs> uh, and so that's where that comes from. Yeah, okay. So let's set it in start with coffee. Yes. All right. Darling, you're blocking me. Yes. We have, we have not enough offstage over here. So. I know. They're so lovely, though. They are very lovely. All right, so if we're in Starbucks, I'm a barista, yeah? Yeah. I'm a lonely barista, signorina barista. Cappuccino, caffè, latte, caramello, macchiato With a coconut cinnamon latte with peppermint mocha and chocolate whipped cream But wait, it's Count Cappuccino <laughs> Is he going to have to leave his profession? 
Does this mean I get a promotion? Yes. But 